Easter Island is an island and special territory of Chile in the southeastern Pacific Ocean, at the southeasternmost point of the Polynesian Triangle in Oceania. Easter Island is most famous for its nearly 1,000 extant monumental statues, called Moai, created by the early Rapa Nui people. In 1995, UNESCO named Easter Island a World Heritage Site, with much of the island protected within Rapa Nui National Park. It is believed that Easter Island's Polynesian inhabitants arrived on Easter Island sometime near 1200. They created a thriving and industrious culture, as evidenced by the island's numerous enormous stone moai and other artifacts. However, land clearing for cultivation and the introduction of the Polynesian rat, led to gradual deforestation. By the time of European arrival in 1722, the island's population was estimated to be 2,000 to 3,000. European diseases, Peruvian slave raiding expeditions in the 1860s, and emigration to other islands, for example Tahiti, further depleted the population, reducing it to a low of 111 native inhabitants in 1877. Chile annexed Easter Island in 1888. In 1966, the Rapa Nui were granted Chilean citizenship. In 2007 the island gained the constitutional status of special territory. Administratively, it belongs to the Valparaiso region, constituting a single commune of the province Isla de Pascua. The 2017 Chilean census registered 7,750 people on the island, of whom 3,512 considered themselves Rapa Nui. Easter Island is one of the most remote inhabited islands in the world. The nearest inhabited land is Pitcairn Island, 2,075 kilometers away, the nearest town with a population over 500 is Rikitia, on the island of Mangareva, 2,606 kilometers away, the nearest continental point lies in central Chile, 3,512 kilometers away. Easter Island is considered part of Insula Chile. Chapter 1, Etymology the name Easter Island was given by the island's first recorded European visitor, the Dutch explorer Jacob Roggeven, who encountered it on Easter Sunday in 1722, while searching for Davis Land. Roggeven named it Pasch Island. The island's official Spanish name, Isla de Pascua, also means Easter Island. The current Polynesian name of the island, Rapa Nui, was coined after the slave raids of the early 1860s, and refers to the island's topographic resemblance to the island of Rapa in the base islands of the Austral Islands group. However, Norwegian ethnographer Thor Heerdal argued that Rapa was the original name of Easter Island and that Rapa Iti was named by refugees from there. The phrase Te Pito o Te Henua has been said to be the original name of the island since French ethnologist Alphonse Pinot gave it the romantic translation The Naval of the World in his voyage Are L'Ile de Poc, published in 1877. William Churchill inquired about the phrase and was told that there were three Te Pito o Te Henua these being the three capes of the island. The phrase appears to have been used in the same sense as the designation of land's end at the tip of Cornwall. He was unable to elicit a Polynesian name for the island and concluded that there may not have been one dot according to Barthel, oral tradition has it that the island was first named Te Pito o Te Kainga Haumaka, the little piece of land of Haumaka. However, there are two words pronounced Pito in Rapa Nui, one meaning end and one navel, and the phrase can thus also mean the navel of the world. Another name, Mata Ki Te Rangi, means eyes looking to the sky. Islanders are referred to in Spanish as Pascuense, however it is common to refer to members of the indigenous community as Rapa Nui. Felipe González de Ejido named it Isla de San Carlos, or Isla de David in 1770. Chapter 2, History Chapter 3 Section 1, Introduction Oral tradition states the island was first settled by a two-canoe expedition, originating from Mare Renga, and led by the chief Hotumatua and his captain Tu Koeho. The island was first scouted after Holmarka dreamed of such a far-off country, Hotu deemed it a worthwhile place to flee from a neighboring chief, one to whom he had already lost three battles. At their time of arrival, 
the island had one lone settler, Nartavekate Rona. After a brief stay at Anakena, the colonists settled in different parts of the island. Hotu's heir, Tuma Heke, was born on the island. Tu Koeho is viewed as the leader who brought the statues and caused them to walk. The Easter Islanders are considered to be Southeast Polynesians. Similar sacred zones with statuary in East Polynesia demonstrate homology with most of Eastern Polynesia. At contact, populations were about 3,000 to 4,000. By the 15th century, two confederations, Hanau, of social groupings matter, existed based on lineage. The western and northern portion of the island belonged to the two, which included the royal Miru, with the royal center at Anakena, though Tahai and Tepu served as earlier capitals. The eastern portion of the island belonged to the Otui too. Shortly after the Dutch visit, from 1724 until 1750, the Otui too fought the two for control of the island. This fighting continued until the 1860s. Famine followed the burning of huts and the destruction of fields. Social control vanished as the ordered way of life gave way to lawlessness and predatory bands as the warrior class took over. Homelessness prevailed, with many living underground. After the Spanish visit, from 1770 onwards, a period of statue toppling, Hurimai, commenced. This was an attempt by competing groups to destroy the socio-spiritual power, or mana, represented by statues, making sure to break them in the fall to ensure they were dead and without power. None were left standing by the time of the arrival of the French missionaries in the 1860s. Between 1862 and 1888, about 94% of the population perished or emigrated. The island was victimized by blackbirding from 1862 to 1863, resulting in the abduction or killing of about 1,500, with 1,408 working as indentured servants in Peru. Only about a dozen eventually returned to Easter Island, but they brought smallpox, which decimated the remaining population of 1,500. Those who perished included the island's Tumu Evi Artua, bearers of the island's culture, history, and genealogy besides the Rongo Rongo experts. Chapter 3 Section 2, Rapa Nui Settlement Estimated dates of initial settlement of Easter Island have ranged from 300 to 1200 AD, though the current best estimate for colonization is in the 12th century AD. Easter Island colonization likely coincided with the arrival of the first settlers in Hawaii. Rectifications in radiocarbon dating have changed almost all of the previously posited early settlement dates in Polynesia. Ongoing archaeological studies provide this late date, radiocarbon dates for the earliest stratigraphic layers at Anakena, Easter Island, and analysis of previous radiocarbon dates imply that the island was colonized late, about 1200 AD. Significant ecological impacts and major cultural investments in monumental architecture and statuary thus began soon after initial settlement. According to oral tradition, the first settlement was at Anakena. Researchers have noted that the Kaleta Anakena landing point provides the island's best shelter from prevailing swells as well as a sandy beach for canoe landings and launchings, so it is a likely early place of settlement. However radiocarbon dating concludes that other sites preceded Anakena by many years, especially the Tahai by several centuries. The island was most likely populated by Polynesians who navigated in canoes or catamarans from the Gambia Islands away, or the Morquesas Islands, 3,200 kilometers away. According to some theories, such as the Polynesian diaspora theory, there is a possibility that early Polynesian settlers arrived from South America due to their remarkable sea navigation abilities. Theorists have supported this through the agricultural evidence of the sweet potato. The sweet potato was a favored crop in Polynesian society for generations but it originated in South America, suggesting interaction between these two geographic areas. However, Recent research suggests that sweet potatoes may have spread to Polynesia by long-distance dispersal long before the Polynesians arrived. When James Cook visited the island, one of his crew members, 
a Polynesian from Bora Bora, Hitihiti, was able to communicate with the Rapa Nui. The language most similar to Rapa Nui is Mangarevan, with an estimated 80% similar vocabulary. In 1999, a voyage with reconstructed Polynesian boats was able to reach Easter Island from Mangareva in 19 days. According to oral traditions recorded by missionaries in the 1860s, the island originally had a strong class system, an Ariki, or high chief, wielded great power over nine other clans and their respective chiefs. The high chief was the eldest descendant through firstborn lines of the island's legendary founder, Hotumatua. The most visible element in the culture was the production of massive Moai statues that some believe represented deified ancestors. According to National Geographic, most scholars suspect that the Moai were created to honor ancestors, chiefs, or other important personages, however, no written and little oral history exists on the island, so it's impossible to be certain. It was believed that the living had a symbiotic relationship with the dead in which the dead provided everything that the living needed and the living, through offerings, provided the dead with a better place in the spirit world. Most settlements were located on the coast, and most Maya were erected along the coastline, watching over their descendants in the settlements before them, with their backs toward the spirit world in the sea. Jared Diamond suggested that cannibalism took place on Easter Island after the construction of the Maya contributed to environmental degradation when extreme deforestation destabilized an already precarious ecosystem. Archaeological record shows that at the time of the initial settlement the island was home to many species of trees, including at least three species which grew up to 15 meters or more, Pascala cocos, Alphitonia zizyphoids, and Eliocarpus rerotongensis. At least six species of land birds were known to live on the island. A major factor that contributed to the extinction of multiple plant species was the introduction of the Polynesian rat. Studies by paleobotanists have shown rats can dramatically affect the reproduction of vegetation in an ecosystem. In the case of Rapa Nui, recovered plant seed shells showed markings of being gnawed on by rats. Barbara A. West wrote, Sometime before the arrival of Europeans on Easter Island, the Rapa Nui experienced a tremendous upheaval in their social system brought about by a change in their island's ecology. By the time of European arrival in 1722, the island's population had dropped to 2,000 to 3,000 from a high of approximately 15,000 just a century earlier. By that time, 21 species of trees and all species of land birds became extinct through some combination of over-harvesting, over-hunting, rat predation, and climate change. The island was largely deforested, and it did not have any trees taller than 3 meters. Loss of large trees meant that residents were no longer able to build seaworthy vessels, significantly diminishing their fishing abilities. One theory is that the trees were used as rollers to move the statues to their place of erection from the quarry at Rano Raraku. Deforestation also caused erosion which caused a sharp decline in agricultural production. This was exacerbated by the loss of land birds and the collapse in seabird populations as a source of food. By the 18th century, islanders were largely sustained by farming, with domestic chickens as the primary source of protein. As the island became overpopulated and resources diminished, warriors known as Matatoa gained more power and the ancestor cult ended, making way for the bird man cult. Beverly Horn wrote The concept of mana invested in hereditary leaders was recast into the person of the bird man, apparently beginning circa 1540 and coinciding with the final vestiges of the Maya period. This cult maintained that, although the ancestors still provided for their descendants, the medium through which the living could contact the dead was no longer statues but human beings chosen through a competition. The god responsible for creating humans, Maki Maki, played an important role in this process. Catherine Rotledge, who systematically collected the island's traditions in her 1919 expedition, showed that the competitions for Birdman started around 1760, after the arrival of the first Europeans, and ended in 1878, with the construction of the first church by Roman Catholic missionaries who formally arrived in 1864. 
Petroglyphs representing bird men on Easter Island are the same as some in Hawaii, indicating that this concept was probably brought by the original settlers, only the competition itself was unique to Easter Island. According to Diamond and Herdel's version of the island's history, the Huri Moai statue toppling continued into the 1830s as a part of fierce internal wars. By 1838, the only standing Moai were on the slopes of Rano Raraku, in Hoa Hakananea in Orongo, and Ariki Paro in Ahute Pitokura. A study headed by Douglas Ousley published in 1994 asserted that there is little archaeological evidence of pre-European societal collapse. Bone pathology and ostimetric data from islanders of that period clearly suggest few fatalities can be attributed directly to violence. Chapter 3 Section 3, European Contact The first recorded European contact with the island was on 5 April 1722, Easter Sunday, by Dutch navigator Jacob Rogoven. His visit resulted in the death of about a dozen islanders, including the Tumu Evi Artua, and the wounding of many others. The next foreign visitors were two Spanish ships, San Lorenzo and Santa Rosalia, under the command of Captain Don Felipe González de Ajillo. The Spanish were amazed by the standing idols, all of which were erect at the time. Four years later, in 1774, British explorer James Cook visited Easter Island, he reported that some statues had been toppled. Through the interpretation of Hiti Hiti, Cook learned the statues commemorated their former high chiefs, including their names and ranks. On 10 April 1776, French Admiral Jean Francois de Galaupe, Cote de la Perouse, anchored at Hangar Roa at the start of a circumnavigation of the Pacific. He made a detailed map of the bay, including his anchorage points as well as a more generalized map of the island, plus some illustrations. Chapter 3 Section 4, 19th Century A series of devastating events killed or removed most of the population in the 1860s. In December 1862, Peruvian slave raiders struck. Violent abductions continued for several months, eventually capturing around 1,500 men and women, half of the island's population. Among those captured were the island's paramount chief, his heir, and those who knew how to read and write the Rongorongo script, the only Polynesian script to have been found to date, although debate exists about whether this is proto-writing or true writing. When the slave raiders were forced to repatriate the people they had kidnapped, carriers of smallpox disembarked together with a few survivors on each of the islands. This created devastating epidemics from Easter Island to the Morquesas Islands. Easter Island's population was reduced to the point where some of the dead were not even buried. Tuberculosis, introduced by whalers in the mid-19th century, had already killed several islanders when the first Christian missionary, Eugen Erod, died from this disease in 1867. About a quarter of the island's population succumbed along with him. In the following years, the managers of the sheep ranch and the missionaries started buying the newly available lands of the deceased, and this led to great confrontations between natives and settlers. Jean-Baptiste Dutru Bornia bought up all of the island apart from the missionaries area around Hangar Roa and moved a few hundred Rapa Nui to Tahiti to work for his backers. In 1871 the missionaries, having fallen out with Dutru Bornia, evacuated all but 171 Rapa Nui to the Gambia Islands. Those who remained were mostly older men. Six years later, only 111 people lived on Easter Island, and only 36 of them had any offspring. From that point on, the island's population slowly recovered. But with over 97% of the population dead or gone in less than a decade, much of the island's cultural knowledge had been lost. Alexander Salmon Jr., a son of an English Jewish merchant and a Pomare dynasty prince, eventually worked to repatriate workers from his inherited copra plantation. He eventually bought up all lands on the island with the exception of the mission, and was its sole employer. He worked to develop tourism on the island, and was the principal informant for the British and German archaeological expeditions for the island. He sent several pieces of genuine Rongorongo to his niece's husband, 
the German consul in Valparaiso, Chile. Salmon sold the Brander Easter Island holdings to the Chilean government on 2 January 1888, and signed as a witness to the cession of the island. He returned to Tahiti in December 1888. He effectively ruled the island from 1878 until his cession to Chile in 1888. Easter Island was annexed by Chile on 9 September 1888 by Policarpo Toro by means of the Treaty of Annexation of the Island. Toro, representing the government of Chile, signed with Atamo Tequina, designated king by the Roman Catholic missionaries after the paramount chief and his heir had died. The validity of this treaty is still contested by some Rapa Nui. Officially, Chile purchased the nearly all-encompassing Mason Brander Sheep Ranch, comprised from lands purchased from the descendants of Rapa Nui who died during the epidemics, and then claimed sovereignty over the island. Chapter 3 Section 5, 20th Century Until the 1960s, the surviving Rapa Nui were confined to Hangar Roa. The rest of the island was rented to the Williamson Balfour Company as a sheep farm until 1953. This exemplified the introduction of private property into Rapa Nui. The island was then managed by the Chilean Navy until 1966, at which point the island was reopened in its entirety. In 1966, the Rapa Nui were colonized and given Chilean citizenship. Following the 1973 Chilean coup d'etat that brought Augusto Pinochet to power, Easter Island was placed under martial law. Tourism slowed, land was broken up and private property was distributed to investors. During his time in power, Pinochet visited Easter Island on three occasions. The military built military facilities and a city hall. After an agreement in 1985 between Chile and United States, the runway at Mataveri International Airport was enlarged and was inaugurated in 1987. The runway was expanded 423 meters reaching 3,353 meters. Pinochet is reported to have refused to attend the inauguration in protest at pressures from the United States over human rights. Chapter 3 Section 6, 21st Century Fishers of Rapa Nui have shown their concern of illegal fishing on the island. Since the year 2000 we started to lose tuna, which is the basis of the fishing on the island, so then we began to take the fish from the shore to feed our families, but in less than two years we depleted all of it, Pakarati said. On 30 July 2007, a constitutional reform gave Easter Island and the Juan Fernandez Islands the status of special territories of Chile. Pending the enactment of a special charter, the island continues to be governed as a province of the V region of Valparaiso. Species of fish were collected in Easter Island for one month in different habitats, including shallow lava pools and deep waters. Within these habitats, two holotypes and paratypes, Antenarius randli and Antenarius moai, were discovered. These are considered frogfish because of their characteristics 12 dorsal rays, last two or three branched bony part of first dorsal spine slightly shorter than second dorsal spine, body without bold zebra-like markings, caudal peduncle short, but distinct, last pelvic ray divided, pectoral rays 11 or 12. In 2018, the government decided to limit the stay period for tourists from 90 to 30 days because of social and environmental issues faced by the island to preserve its historical importance. Chapter 3 Section 7 Indigenous Rights Movement. Starting in August 2010, members of the indigenous Hitarangi clan occupied the Hungaroa Eco Village and Spa. The occupiers alleged that the hotel was bought from the Pinochet government, in violation of a Chilean agreement with the indigenous Rapa Nui, in the 1990s. The occupiers say their ancestors had been cheated into giving up the land. According to a BBC report, on 3 December 2010, at least 25 people were injured when Chilean police using pellet guns attempted to evict from these buildings a group of Rapa Nui who had claimed that the land the buildings stood on had been illegally taken from their ancestors. In January 2011, the UN Special Rapporteur on Indigenous People, James Anaya, 
expressed concern about the treatment of the indigenous Rapa Nui by the Chilean government, urging Chile to make every effort to conduct a dialogue in good faith with representatives of the Rapa Nui people to solve, as soon as possible the real underlying problems that explain the current situation. The incident ended in February 2011, when up to 50 armed police broke into the hotel to remove the final five occupiers. They were arrested by the government, and no injuries were reported. Chapter 3 – Geography Easter Island is one of the world's most isolated inhabited islands. Its closest inhabited neighbors are the Chilean Juan Fernandez Islands, 1,850 kilometers to the east, with approximately 850 inhabitants. The nearest continental point lies in central Chile near Concepcion, at 3,512 km. Easter Island's latitude is similar to that of Caldera, Chile, and it lies 3,510 km west of continental Chile at its nearest point. Isla Salas y Gómez, 415 km to the east, is closer but is uninhabited. The Tristan da Cunha archipelago in the southern Atlantic competes for the title of the most remote island, lying 2,430 km from St. Helena Island and 2,816 km from the South African coast. The island is about 24.6 km long by 12.3 km at its widest point, its overall shape is triangular. It has an area of 163.6 square kilometers and a maximum elevation of 507 meters above mean sea level. There are three Rano, at Rano Cao, Rano Raraku, and Rano Aroy, near the summit of Teravaca, but no permanent streams or rivers. Chapter 4 Section 1, Geology Easter Island is a volcanic high island, consisting mainly of three extinct coalesced volcanoes, Teravaca forms the bulk of the island, while two other volcanoes, Poike and Rano Kau, form the eastern and southern headlands and give the island its roughly triangular shape. Lesser cones and other volcanic features include the crater Rano Raraku, the cinder cone Puna Por, and many volcanic caves including lava tubes. Poike used to be a separate island until volcanic material from Teravaca united it to the larger whole. The island is dominated by Hawaiian and basalt flows which are rich in iron and show affinity with igneous rocks found in the Galapagos Islands. Easter Island and surrounding islets, such as Motu Nui and Motu Iti, form the summit of a large volcanic mountain rising over 2,000 meters from the sea bed. The mountain is part of the Sala Y Gomez Ridge, a mountain range with dozens of seamounts, formed by the Easter hotspot. The range begins with Pukau and Next Mai, two seamounts to the west of Easter Island, and extends 2,700 km east to the Nazca Ridge. The ridge was formed by the Nazca Plate moving over the Easter Hotspot. Located about 350 km east of the East Pacific Rise, Easter Island lies within the Nazca Plate, bordering the Easter Microplate. The Nazca Pacific Relative Plate movement, due to the seafloor spreading, amounts to about 150 mm per year. This movement over the Easter hotspot has resulted in the Easter Seamount chain, which merges into the Nazca Ridge further to the east. Easter Island and Sala Y Gomez are surface representations of that chain. The chain has progressively younger ages to the west. The current hotspot location is speculated to be west of Easter Island, amidst the Ahu, Umu and Tupa submarine volcanic fields and the Pukau and Mai seamounts. Easter Island lies atop the Rano Kau Ridge, and consists of three shield volcanoes with parallel geologic histories. Poike and Rano Kau exist on the east and south slopes of Teravaca, respectively. Rano Kau developed between 0.78 and 0.46 Ma from tholeitic to alkalic basalts. This volcano possesses a clearly defined summit caldera. Benmoitic lavas extruded about the rim from 0.35 to 0.34 Ma. Finally, between 0.24 and 0.11 Ma, a 6.5 km fissure developed along an ESW trend, forming monogenetic vents and rhyolitic intrusions. 
These include the cryptodome islets of Motu Nui and Motu Iti, the islet of Motu Keo Keo, the sheet intrusion of Te Kari Kari, the perlitic obsidian Te Manave Dome and the Mama Orito Dome. Poike formed from tholeitic to alkali basalts from 0.78 to 0.41 Ma. Its summit collapsed into a caldera which was subsequently filled by the Pwakatiki lava cone Pahoehoe flows at 0.36 Ma. Finally, the trachytic lava domes of Mama Via Hava, Mama TT, and Mana Pear formed along an ESW trending fissure. Teravaka formed around 0.77 Ma of tholeitic to alkali basalts, followed by the collapse of its summit into a caldera. Then at about 0.3 Ma, Cinder cones formed along a NNE SSW trend on the western rim, while porphyritic benmoitic lava filled the caldera, and Pahoehoe flowed towards the northern coast, forming lava tubes, and to the southeast. Lava domes and a vent complex formed in the Mauna Puka area, while breccias formed along the vents on the western portion of Rano Arroy crater. This volcano's southern and southeastern flanks are composed of younger flows consisting of basalt, alkali basalt, hawite, mugierite, and benmoite from eruptive fissures starting at 0.24 Ma. The youngest lava flow, Royho, is dated at 0.11 Ma. The hangar OTO embayment is interpreted to be a 200 meters high landslide scarp. Rano Raraku and Mauna Toa Toa are isolated tuff cones of about 0.21 Ma. The crater of Rano Raraku contains a freshwater lake. The stratified tuff is composed of sidromelane, slightly altered to palagonite, and somewhat lithified. The tuff contains lithic fragments of older lava flows. The northwest sector of Rano Raraku contains reddish volcanic ash. According to Bandy, all of the great images of Easter Island are carved from the light and porous tuff from Rano Raraku. A carving was abandoned when a large, dense and hard lithic fragment was encountered. However, these lithics became the basis for stone hammers and chisels. The Puna Poor Crater contains an extremely porous pumice, from which was carved the Pukau hats. The Maua Orito obsidian was used to make the matter spearheads. In the first half of the 20th century, steam reportedly came out of the Rano Kau crater wall. This was photographed by the island's manager, Mr. Edmonds. Chapter 4 Section 2 Climate Under the Kirpan Climate Classification, the climate of Easter Island is classified as a tropical rainforest climate that borders on a humid subtropical climate. The lowest temperatures are recorded in July and August and the highest in February, the summer season in the southern hemisphere. Winters are relatively mild. The rainiest month is May, though the island experiences year-round rainfall. Easter Island's isolated location exposes it to winds which help to keep the temperature fairly cool. Precipitation averages 1,118 mm per year. Occasionally, heavy rainfall and rainstorms strike the island. These occur mostly in the winter months. Since it is close to the South Pacific High and outside the range of the Intertropical Convergence Zone, cyclones and hurricanes do not occur around Easter Island. There is significant temperature moderation due to its isolated position in the middle of the ocean. Chapter 4, Ecology Easter Island, together with its closest neighbor, the tiny island of Isla Sala y Gomez 415 km farther east, is recognized by ecologists as a distinct ecoregion, the Rapa Nui subtropical broadleaf forests. The original subtropical moist broadleaf forests are now gone, but paleobotanical studies of fossil pollen, tree molds left by lava flows, and root casts found in local soils indicate that the island was formerly forested, with a range of trees, shrubs, ferns, and grasses. A large extinct palm, Pascala cocos disperta, related to the Chilean wine palm, was one of the dominant trees as attested by fossil evidence. Like its Chilean counterpart it probably took close to 100 years to reach adult height. The Polynesian rat, which the original settlers brought with them, played a very important role in the disappearance of the Rapa Nui palm. 
Although some may believe that rats played a major role in the degradation of the forest, less than 10% of palm nuts show teeth marks from rats. The remains of palm stumps in different places indicate that humans caused the trees to fall because in large areas, the stumps were cut efficiently. In 2018, a New York Times article announced that Easter Island is eroding. The clearance of the palms to make the settlements led to their extinction almost 350 years ago. The Toromiro tree was prehistorically present on Easter Island, but is now extinct in the wild. However, the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew and the Yertabori Botanical Garden are jointly leading a scientific program to reintroduce the Toromiro to Easter Island. With the palm and the Toromiro virtually gone, there was considerably less rainfall as a result of less condensation. After the island was used to feed thousands of sheep for almost a century, by the mid-1900s the island was mostly covered in grassland with Ngatu or bulrush, in the crater lakes of Rano Raraku and Rano Kau. The presence of these reeds, which are called Totora in the Andes, was used to support the argument of a South American origin of the statue builders, but pollen analysis of lake sediments shows these reeds have grown on the island for over 30,000 years. Before the arrival of humans, Easter Island had vast seabird colonies containing probably over 30 resident species, perhaps the world's richest. Such colonies are no longer found on the main island. Fossil evidence indicates six species of land birds, all of which have become extinct. Five introduced species of land bird are known to have breeding populations. Lack of studies results in poor understanding of the oceanic fauna of Easter Island and waters in its vicinity, however, possibilities of undiscovered breeding grounds for humpback, southern blue and pygmy blue whales including Easter Island and Isla Salas y Gomez have been considered. Potential breeding areas for fin whales have been detected off northeast of the island as well. Vegetation on the island The immunosuppressant drug Cyrolimus was first discovered in the bacterium Streptomyces hygroscopicus in a soil sample from Easter Island. The drug is also known as rapamycin, after Rapa Nui. It is now being studied for extending longevity in mice. Trees are sparse, rarely forming natural groves, and it has been argued whether native Easter Islanders deforested the island in the process of erecting their statues, and in providing sustenance for an overpopulated island. Experimental archaeology demonstrated that some statues certainly could have been placed on Y-shaped wooden frames called Miro Manga Erua and then pulled to their final destinations on ceremonial sites. Other theories involve the use of ladders over which the statues could have been dragged. Rapa Nui traditions metaphorically refer to spiritual power as the means by which the Mai were walked from the quarry. Recent experimental recreations have proven that it is fully possible that the Mai were literally walked from their quarries to their final positions by use of ropes, casting doubt on the role that their existence plays in the environmental collapse of the island. Given the island's southern latitude, the climatic effects of the Little Ice Age may have exacerbated deforestation, although this remains speculative. Many researchers point to the climatic downtrend caused by the Little Ice Age as a contributing factor to resource stress and to the palm tree's disappearance. Experts, however, do not agree on when the island's palms became extinct. Jared Diamond dismisses past climate change as a dominant cause of the island's deforestation in his book Collapse which assesses the collapse of the ancient Easter Islanders. Influenced by Heyerdahl's romantic interpretation of Easter's history, Diamond insists that the disappearance of the island's trees seems to coincide with a decline of its civilization around the 17th and 18th centuries. He notes that they stopped making statues at that time and started destroying the Ahu. But the link is weakened because the Birdman cult continued to thrive and survived the great impact caused by the arrival of explorers, whalers, sandalwood traders, and slave raiders. Midden contents show that the main source of protein was tuna and dolphin. With the loss of the trees, there was a sudden drop in the quantities of fish bones found in middens as the islanders lost the means to construct fishing vessels, coinciding with a large increase in bird bones. 
This was followed by a decrease in the number of bird bones as birds lost their nesting sites or became extinct. A new style of art from this period shows people with exposed ribs and distended bellies, indicative of malnutrition, and it is around this time that many islanders moved, to living in fortified caves and the first signs of warfare and cannibalism appear. Soil erosion because of lack of trees is apparent in some places. Sediment samples document that up to half of the native plants had become extinct and that the vegetation of the island drastically altered. Polynesians were primarily farmers, not fishermen, and their diet consisted mainly of cultivated staples, such as taro root, sweet potato, yams, cassava, and bananas. With no trees to protect them, sea spray led to crop failures exacerbated by a sudden reduction in fresh water flows. There is evidence that the islanders took to planting crops in caves beneath collapsed ceilings and covered the soil with rocks to reduce evaporation. Cannibalism occurred on many Polynesian islands, sometimes in times of plenty as well as famine. Its presence on Easter Island is supported by oral histories. Benny Pieser noted evidence of self sufficiency when Europeans first arrived. The island still had smaller trees, mainly Toromiro, which became extinct in the wild in the 20th century probably because of slow growth and changes in the island's ecosystem. Cornelis Bauman, Jacob Rogoven's captain, stated in his logbook, of yams, bananas and small coconut palms we saw little and no other trees or crops. According to Carl Friedrich Behrens, Rogoven's officer, the natives presented palm branches as peace offerings. According to ethnographer Alfred Mitero, the most common type of house was called Herr Pinger because the roof resembled an overturned boat. The foundations of the houses were made of buried basalt slabs with holes for wooden beams to connect with each other throughout the width of the house. These were then covered with a layer of totora reed, followed by a layer of woven sugarcane leaves, and lastly a layer of woven grass. Pisa claims that these reports indicate that large trees existed at that time, which is perhaps contradicted by the Bauman quote above. Plantations were often located farther inland, next to foothills, inside open ceiling lava tubes, and in other places protected from the strong salt winds and salt spray affecting areas closer to the coast. It is possible many of the Europeans did not venture inland. The statue quarry, only one kilometer from the coast with an impressive cliff 100 meters high, was not explored by Europeans until well into the 19th century. Easter Island has suffered from heavy soil erosion in recent centuries, perhaps aggravated by agriculture and massive deforestation. This process seems to have been gradual and may have been aggravated by sheep farming throughout most of the 20th century. Jacob Rogoven reported that Easter Island was exceptionally fertile. Fowls are the only animals they keep. They cultivate bananas, sugarcane, and above all sweet potatoes. In 1786 Jean-Francois de La Pères visited Easter Island and his gardener declared that three days' work a year, would be enough to support the population. Rollin, a major in the Pères expedition, wrote, instead of meeting with men exhausted by famine. I found, on the contrary, a considerable population, with more beauty and race than I afterwards met in any other island, and a soil, which, with very little labor, furnished excellent provisions, and in an abundance more than sufficient for the consumption of the inhabitants. According to Diamond, the oral traditions of the current islanders seem obsessed with cannibalism, which he offers as evidence supporting a rapid collapse. For example, he states, to severely insult an enemy one would say, the flesh of your mother sticks between my teeth. This, Diamond asserts, means the food supply of the people ultimately ran out. Cannibalism, however, was widespread across Polynesian cultures. Human bones have not been found in earth ovens other than those behind the religious platforms, indicating that cannibalism in Easter Island was a ritualistic practice. Contemporary ethnographic research has proven there is scarcely any tangible evidence for widespread cannibalism anywhere and at any time on the island. 
The first scientific exploration of Easter Island recorded that the indigenous population strongly rejected allegations that they or their ancestors had been cannibals. Chapter 5, Culture Chapter 6, Section 1, Mythology The most important myths are Tangata Manu, the Birdman cult which was practiced until the 1860s. Maki Maki, an important god. Aku Aku, the guardians of the sacred family caves. Mai Kava Kava, ghost man of the Hanau Ape. Hekai Ita Umu Pe Haunga Takapu Hanau Ape Kai Noego, the sacred chant to appease the Aku Aku before entering a family cave. Chapter 6, Section 2, Stonework The Rapa Nui people had a Stone Age culture and made extensive use of local stone. Basalt, a hard, dense stone used for toki and at least one of the Mai. Obsidian, a volcanic glass with sharp edges used for sharp-edged implements such as matter, and for the black pupils of the eyes of the Mai. Red scoria from Puna Por, a very light red stone used for the pukau and a few mai. Tough from Rano Raraku, a much more easily worked rock than basalt that was used for most of the mai. Chapter 6, Section 3 Subsection 1, Statues The large stone statues, or moai, for which Easter Island is famous, were carved in the period 1100 to 1680 AD. A total of 887 monolithic stone statues have been inventoried on the island and in museum collections. Although often identified as Easter Island heads, the statues have torsos, most of them ending at the top of the thighs, a small number are complete figures that kneel on bent knees with their hands over their stomachs. Some upright moai have become buried up to their necks by shifting soils. Almost all moai were carved from compressed, easily worked solidified volcanic ash or tuff, found at a single site on the side of the extinct volcano Rano Raraku. The native islanders who carved them used only stone hand chisels, mainly basalt toki, which lie in place all over the quarry. The stone chisels were sharpened by chipping off a new edge when dulled. While sculpting was going on, the volcanic stone was splashed with water to soften it. While many teams worked on different statues at the same time, a single Moai took a team of five or six men approximately a year to complete. Each statue represented the deceased head of a lineage. Only a quarter of the statues were installed. Nearly half remained in the quarry at Rano Raraku, and the rest sat elsewhere, presumably on their way to intended locations. The largest Moai raised on a platform is known as Paro. It weighs 82 tons and is 9.89 meters long. Several other statues of similar weight were transported to Ahu on the north and south coasts. Possible means by which the statues were moved include employment of a Miro Manga Erua, a Y-shaped sledge with cross pieces, pulled with ropes made from the tough bark of the Hau tree and tied around the statue's neck. Anywhere from 180 to 250 men were required for pulling, depending on the size of the Mai. Among other researchers on moving and erecting the Mai was Vince Lee, who reenacted a Mai moving scenario. Some 50 of the statues were re erected in modern times. One of the first was on Ahu Achure Huke, in Anakena Beach in 1956. It was raised using traditional methods during a Heidel expedition. Another method that might have been used to transport the Mai would be to attach ropes to the statue and rock it, tugging it forward as it rocked. This would fit the legend of the Mai walking to their final locations. This might have been managed by as few as 15 people, supported by the following evidence. The heads of the Mai in the quarry are sloped forward, whereas the ones moved to final locations are not. This would serve to provide a better center of gravity for transport. The statues found along the transport roads have wider bases than statues installed on Ahu, this would facilitate more stable transport. Studies have shown fractures along the bases of the statues in transport, these could have arisen from rocking the statue back and forth and placing great pressures on the edges. 
The statues found mounted on Nehu do not have wide bases, and stone chips found at the sites suggest they were further modified on placement. The abandoned and fallen statues near the old roads are found face down on ascending grades and on their backs when headed uphill. Some were documented standing upright along the old roads, for example, by a party from Captain Cook's voyage that rested in the shade of a standing statue. This would be consistent with upright transport. There is debate regarding the effects of the monument creation process on the environment. Some believe that the process of creating the Mai caused widespread deforestation and ultimately a civil war over scarce resources. In 2011, a large Moai statue was excavated from the ground. During the same excavation program, some larger Mai were found to have complex dorsal petroglyphs. Revealed by deep excavation of the torso. In 2020, a pickup truck crashed into and destroyed a Maui statue due to brake failure. No one was injured in the incident. Maui's Chapter 6, Section 3, Subsection 2 Stone Platforms. Ahu are stone platforms. Varying greatly in layout, many were reworked during or after the Huri Mai or statue toppling era. Many became ossuaries, one was dynamited open, and Ahu Tongariki was swept inland by a tsunami. Of the 313 known Ahu, 125 carried Mai, usually just one, probably because of the shortness of the Mai period and transportation difficulties. Ahu Tongariki, one kilometer from Rano Raraku, had the most and tallest Mai, 15 in total. Other notable Ahu with Mai are Ahu Akivi restored in 1960 by William Molloy, now now at Anakena and Tahai. Some Moai may have been made from wood and were lost. The classic elements of Ahu design are a retaining rear wall several feet high, usually facing the sea. A front wall made of rectangular basalt slabs called pinga. A fascia made of red scoria that went over the front wall. A sloping ramp in the inland part of the platform, extending outward like wings. A pavement of even-sized, round water-worn stones called poro. An alignment of stones before the ramp. A paved plaza before the ahu. This was called mare. Inside the ahu was a fill of rubble dot on top of many ahu would have been. Mai on squarish pedestals looking inland, the ramp with the poro before them. Pukau or how high tai rao on the Moai heads. When a ceremony took place, eyes were placed on the statues. The whites of the eyes were made of coral, the iris was made of obsidian or red scoria. Ahu evolved from the traditional Polynesian Mare. In this context, Ahu referred to a small structure sometimes covered with a thatched roof where sacred objects, including statues, were stored. The Ahu were usually adjacent to the Mare or main central court where ceremonies took place, though on Easter Island, Ahu and Moai evolved to much greater size. There the Mare is the unpaved plaza before the Ahu. The biggest Ahu is 220 meters and holds 15 statues, some of which are 9 meters high. The filling of an Ahu was sourced locally. Individual stones are mostly far smaller than the Moai, so less work was needed to transport the raw material, but artificially leveling the terrain for the plaza and filling the Ahu was laborious. Ahu are found mostly on the coast, where they are distributed fairly evenly, except on the western slopes of Mount Teravaka, and the Rano Kau and Poike headlands. These are the three areas with the least low-lying coastal land and, apart from Poike, the furthest areas from Rano Raraku. One Ahu with several Mai was recorded on the cliffs at Rano Kau in the 1880s but had fallen to the beach before the Rotledge expedition. Chapter 6, Section 3 Subsection 3, Stone Walls One of the highest quality examples of Easter Island stone masonry, is the rear wall of the Ahu at Vinpu. Made without mortar by shaping hard basalt rocks of up to 7 tons to match each other exactly, it has a superficial similarity to some Inca stone walls in South America. Chapter 6, Section 3 Subsection 4, 
stone houses. Two types of houses are known from the past, Herpinga, a house with an elliptical foundation, made with basalt slabs and covered with a thatched roof that resembled an overturned boat, and Heroka, a round stone structure. Related stone structures called Tupa look very similar to the Hare Oka, except that the Tupa were inhabited by astronomer priests and located near the coast, where the movements of the stars could be easily observed. Settlements also contain Hare Moa, oblong stone structures that housed chickens. The houses at the ceremonial village of Orono are unique in that they are shaped like Hare Pinga but are made entirely of flat basalt slabs found inside Rano Keo Crater. The entrances to all the houses are very low, and entry requires crawling. In early times the people of Rapa Nui reportedly sent the dead out to sea in small funerary canoes, as did their Polynesian counterparts on other islands. They later started burying people in secret caves to save the bones from desecration by enemies. During the turmoil of the late 18th century, the islanders seem to have started to bury their dead in the space between the belly of a fallen moai and the front wall of the structure. During the time of the epidemics they made mass graves that were semi-pyramidal stone structures. Chapter 6, Section 3 Subsection 5, Petroglyphs Petroglyphs are pictures carved into rock, and Easter Island has one of the richest collections in all Polynesia. Around 1,000 sites with more than 4,000 petroglyphs are catalogued. Designs and images were carved out of rock for a variety of reasons, to create totems, to mark territory, or to memorialize a person or event. There are distinct variations around the island in the frequency of themes among petroglyphs, with a concentration of birdmen at Orongo. Other subjects include sea turtles, Komari and Makimaki, the chief god of the Tangata Manu or Birdman cult. Petroglyphs Chapter 6, Section 3 Subsection 6, Caves The island and neighboring Motu Nui are riddled with caves, many of which show signs of past human use for planting and as fortifications, including narrowed entrances and crawl spaces with ambush points. Many caves feature in the myths and legends of the Rapa Nui. Chapter 6, Section 3 Subsection 7, Other Stones The Pu O Hero or Hero's Trumpet is a stone on the north coast of Easter Island. It was once a musical instrument used in fertility rituals. Chapter 6 Section 3, Rongo Rongo Easter Island once had an apparent script called Rongo Rongo. Glyphs include pictographic and geometric shapes, the texts were incised in wood in reverse boustrophied in direction. It was first reported by French missionary Eugène Eraud in 1864. At that time, several islanders said they could understand the writing, but according to tradition, only ruling families and priests were ever literate, and none survived the slave raids and subsequent epidemics. Despite numerous attempts, the surviving texts have not been deciphered, and without decipherment it is not certain that they are actually writing. Part of the problem is the small amount that has survived, only two dozen texts, none of which remain on the island. There are also only a couple of similarities with the petroglyphs on the island. Chapter 6, Section 4, Wood Carving Wood was scarce on Easter Island during the 18th and 19th centuries, but a number of highly detailed and distinctive carvings have found their way to the world's museums. Particular forms include Riemiro, a gorget or breast ornament of crescent shape with a head at one or both tips. The same design appears on the flag of Rapa Nui. Two Ray Miro at the British Museum are inscribed with Rongo Rongo. Moko Miro, a man with a lizard head. The Moko Miro was used as a club because of the legs, which formed a handle shape. If it wasn't held by hand, dancers wore it around their necks during feasts. The Moko Miro would also be placed at the doorway to protect the household from harm. It would be hanging from the roof or set in the ground. The original form had eyes made from white shells, and the pupils were made of obsidian. 
Mai Kava Kava are male carvings and the Mai Pai Pai are female carvings. These grotesque and highly detailed human figures carved from Toromiro pine, represent ancestors. Sometimes these statues were used for fertility rites. Usually, they are used for harvest celebrations, the first picking of fruits was heaped around them as offerings. When the statues were not used, they would be wrapped in bark cloth and kept at home. There were a few times that are reported when the islanders would pick up the figures like dolls and dance with them. The earlier figures are rare and generally depict a male figure with an emaciated body and a goatee. The figure's ribs and vertebrae are exposed and many examples show carved glyphs on various parts of the body but more specifically, on the top of the head. The female figures, rarer than the males, depict the body as flat and often with the female's hand lying across the body. The figures, although some were quite large, were worn as ornamental pieces around a tribesman's neck. The more figures worn, the more important the man. The figures have a shiny pattern developed from constant handling and contact with human skin. Ow, a large dancing paddle. Chapter 6, Section 5 21st century culture. The Rapa Nui sponsor an annual festival, the Teipati, held since 1975 around the beginning of February to celebrate Rapa Nui culture. The islanders also maintain a national football team and three discos in the town of Hanga Roa. Other cultural activities include a musical tradition that combines South American and Polynesian influences and wood carving. Chapter 6, Section 6 Subsection 1, Sports The Chilean leg of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series takes place on the island of Rapa Nui. Chapter 6, Section 6, Teipati Festival Teipati Rapa Nui Festival is an annual two-week-long festival celebrating Easter Island culture. The Teipati is centered around a competition between two families slash clans competing in various competitions to earn points. The winning team has their candidate crowned queen of the island for the next year. The competitions are a way to maintain and celebrate traditional cultural activities such as cooking, jewelry making, wood carving, and canoeing. Chapter 6, Demographics Chapter 7 Section 1 2012 Census. Population of the 2012 Census was 5,761. In 2002, 60% were persons of indigenous Rapa Nui origin, 39% were mainland Chileans of European or Mestizo origin and Easter Island born Mestizos of European and Rapa Nui and or native Chilean descent, and the remaining 1% were indigenous mainland Chilean Amerindians. As of 2012 the population density on Easter Island was only 35 inhabitants per square kilometer. Real Life in Rapa Nui Chapter 7 Section 2 Demographic History The 1982 population was 1,936. The increase in population in the last census was partly caused by the arrival of people of European or mixed European, and Native American descent from the Chilean mainland. However, most married a Rapa Nui spouse. Around 70% of the population were natives. Estimates of the pre-European population range from 7 to 17,000. Easter Island's all-time low of 111 inhabitants was reported in 1877. Out of these 111 Rapa Nui, only 36 had descendants, and all of today's Rapa Nui claim descent from those 36. Chapter 7 Section 3, Languages Easter Island's traditional language is Rapa Nui, an Eastern Polynesian language, sharing some similarities with Hawaiian and Tahitian. However, as in the rest of mainland Chile, the official language used is Spanish. It is supposed that the 2,700 indigenous Rapa Nui living in the island have a certain degree of knowledge of their traditional language, however, census data does not exist on the primary known and spoken languages among Easter Island's inhabitants and there are recent claims that the number of fluent speakers is as low as 800. 
Indeed, Rapa Nui has been suffering processes of decline and Hispanicization, because the island is under the jurisdiction of Chile and is now home to a number of Chilean continentals, most of whom speak only Spanish. For this reason, most Rapa Nui children now grow up speaking Spanish, and those who do learn Rapa Nui begin learning it later in life. Even with efforts to revitalize the language, Ethnologue has established that Rapa Nui is currently a threatened language. Easter Island's indigenous Rapa Nui toponymy has survived with few Spanish additions or replacements, a fact that has been attributed in part to the survival of the Rapa Nui language. Chapter 7 Administration and Legal Status Easter Island shares with Juan Fernandez Islands the constitutional status of Special Territory of Chile, granted in 2007. As of 2011 a special charter for the island was under discussion in the Chilean Congress. Administratively, the island is a province of the Valparaiso region and contains a single commune. Both the province and the commune are called Isla de Pascua and encompass the whole island and its surrounding islets and rocks, plus Isla Salas y Gómez, some 380 kilometers to the east. The provincial governor is appointed by the President of the Republic. The municipal administration is located in Hangaroa, led by a mayor and a six-member municipal council, all directly elected for a four-year mandate. In August 2018, a law took effect prohibiting non-Rapa Nui people from staying on the island for more than 30 days. Since 1966 rape, sexual abuse and crimes against property in Easter Island have lower sentences than corresponding offences in mainland Chile. Chapter 8 Notable people Laura Alarcon Rapu, Governor Angata, native catechist and prophetess who led a 1914 rebellion Sebastian Englert, missionary and ethnologist Ugen Eerod, missionary Thor Heyerdahl, ethnographer Melania Carolina Hotu Hay, Governor Marta Raquel Hotus Tuki, Governor Riro Kainga, last person to hold title of king and rule before Chilean consolidation. Kings of Easter Island. Hotumatu A, island founder. William Malloy, archaeologist. Nyara, one of the last Ariki. Hakobo He Pawa, first Rapa Nui male to earn a law degree and become an attorney. Pedro Pablo Edmonds Pawa, Mayor and former governor. Juan Edmonds Rappahango, former mayor. Hippolyta Roussel, missionary. Catherine Rotledge, archaeologist and anthropologist. Mahani Teave, classical pianist. Atamu Tekina, missionary installed king who ceded Ireland to Chile. Jose Fati Tepano, First Rapa Nui male to serve as a titular judge upon completing the training imparted by the Judicial Academy of Chile. Juan Tepano, indigenous leader and cultural informant. Chapter 9, Transportation. Easter Island is served by Mataveri International Airport, with jet service from Latam Chile and, seasonally, subsidiaries such as Latam Peru. Chapter 10, 